The problem with bushcrafters. Team, this is going to be an intro into a short series. Looking forward to your thoughts and your comments down below as we continue to master our craft and develop our tactical virtue. Of course, here in the United States, there's probably three larger than life bushcrafters that are out there. We're talking about folks like Corporal's Corner with Sean Kelly. There we go, just like that. Gray bearded gray. Gray bearded green beret, if I can learn how to talk with old Josh. <laughs> yes, man, I tell you, you never know exactly what you're going to catch. And uh, he's a good dude. And of course, Dan Woolwack with Coal Cracker Bushcraft. I bet you've seen this before toggle, tarp, prussic, ridge line. Now these, these folks are not the only ones here in the United States. My favorite is probably Donnie Dust. I think that dude is, is pretty stinking awesome. Even the area that I chose, full of rose hips, it's full of coyote willow. I hear squirrels chirping in the distance. So this is how I rock shelter. Thanks for watching. Once you get outside of the United States, the bushcraft community absolutely is explosive. Whether you're, we're talking about up in Canada or all throughout Europe, man, these dudes are doing some amazing stuff. And it's really no wonder that the bushcraft community is so large outside the United States because, well, well they don't have a dadgum second amendment. America, America. But I ain't hating on them. And I'm not hating on any of the ones here in the United States either. Again, uh, a little disclaimer, I've never met any of these three dudes or Donnie. Um, in person, I don't know them. I've, I've, I don't know. I don't hell. I don't even know where they live, right? So, this is not a knock on these people as an individual, uh, personal level at all. In fact, I want to talk about what I think that the bushcraft community is doing right before I share my thoughts about what they are doing that is wrong or that could be leading us down the wrong road. So, bushcrafters, right? They. They, they stake their fame on a little bit of romanticism, and I kind of get that because growing up in the West, my family has a rich history of settling areas like all throughout New Mexico. And I have a long tradition in history that dates back into the, to the early to mid 1800s and with the expansion of the West and the fur trade, and it's absolutely phenomenal. I, I still am really into these primitive skills uh, that our forefathers used in order to be able to survive. I think it's I think it's pretty freaking amazing, to be honest with you. And so the bushcrafter kind of takes some of these skills, and then they go off into the woods and they put them into use. And for us on the viewing end, I, I think again that romanticism that that this is something that is it is it, it's it's a it's wild, it's crazy, it's amazing, right? To to not use the latest gadget to start a fire, right? We're gonna we're gonna rub our fingers until we have enough friction to to get something going, and so. I, I kind of get that, and I think that for the most part, a lot of these dudes do a really good job of putting some handles on some of these skills in order for folks like you and I to be able to, to pick it up and then to take off on our own and put them into practical use. Does that make sense? And I think that's a great thing. You know, I don't know that there's enough folks out there who are putting in a little sweat equity on YouTube in order to be able to present some of these things like that. Um, again, some of the dudes, especially off uh, in Europe, you know, they in inject a lot more story into what they are showing and presenting, right? Some of them may not even talk at all, right? And so it's, it's a little bit more immersive, if you will. You're learning what you're hearing and learning what they're trying to show us, not through their audible mechanisms but just by watching and participating with them right we're, we're kind of along for the ride pretty stinking awesome I, I think and i try to take some of these skills uh both in the trade craft as well as with the camera craft into what i'm doing of course man i'm not a bush crafter i don't even know what the hell i am but i'm just a dude out here doing my thing on this side of the camera so they're all have some po positive things you know when you think about dudes like Dan right he put himself out there on public and went on alone and did an amazing job right uh, old Josh you know he has a long and illustrious career in the United States Army 
And the other dude, I mean, he complains about YouTube holding his channel back with, with a, a million dadgum subscribers. But <laughs> I'm just joshing a little bit. You know, I'm sure I'm sure he's a, a good dude as well. But there is some problems with the bushcraft community that I, I think we don't often address enough of. You know, I think for some who are, who are watching these this type of, of content, they think that what they're going to get is the skills needed to be able to work out through an SHTF moment. Well, if that's what we're thinking, I, I think we're going about things the wrong ways. Now, truth be told, you should have some of these skills, these primitive skills, whether we're talking about fishing, trapping, rope work, hunting, cooking, firecraft, purifying and, and consuming some daggum water. Right? These are all great and outstanding skills to have. But sitting around a campfire carving a spoon, th that's, that's not going to do what some of us think that is going to happen, right? The other issue is I, th I think that we believe that what we see on the screen is reality, right? Now, this is not a new phenomenon. We could go back to ages ago when the screen first came to life in the movies and we started watching t television and soap operas and TV shows and comedies and, and westerns and all this stuff and we think that what we see is real. When we see this guy put on his backpack and he trucks out through the woods and we see him coming and going and going and coming, that this dude is really miles and miles and miles away when truth is, most of the time, if he ever spun his camera around, you probably see a road and a vehicle right behind him. And he may have walked out 100 meters or so and came back. All part of just telling the story. Now, there's nothing wrong with that until we start to believe that what we're seeing is real. That we can do the exact same thing. And there's a lot more to that. Take making a fire. We see this dude spend, you know, a minute maybe on a bow drill set and he has an ember going and that coal's kicking off and he, he blows it into fire. And so that we think that if we just spend a minute rubbing a, some sticks together that we're gonna have a, a daggum fire. Well, we don't see the, the sweat equity, the practice, the rehearsals, the failures of what these dudes are going through. And some of that is our own fault because we don't have the patience to stick it out for that, if that makes sense. We want instant results right now. And so again, you know, that's not a knock on the bushcrafter. That's really more of a knock on us. Right? Because what we're seeing, is, is it's just not real. And a lot of these skills that, that we need to pick up and use and have in our kit, and we need this knowledge deep inside our, our gray housing group, are things that truthfully belong to the contingency or the emergency in our pace plan for all of these skills. If they're our primary go-to, if your primary method of starting a fire is a bow drill, man, we, we have some dadgum problems going on. I'm telling you. So really at the end of the day, you know, YouTube, they, they want folks to focus on specific areas, a niche, if you will. And when you get outside of that niche too far, you know, the algorithm doesn't know what to do. And so again, you know, I'm sure that all three of these folks and all, all of the other ones have a lot of additional skill sets that they could be presenting. But that's just not the niche that they're using YouTube to help get out into the world with some of these uh, tradecraft type items. Because truth be told, I think that we need more than just a particular area. And that's why we're gonna look at, at a couple different niches and talk about the problems with each one. Because if you're solely focused on a niche, on a type of skill set, then you're going to set yourself up for failure because when Murphy comes and slaps you in the face, well, it's not gonna to be too daggum pretty. So I hope all that stuff makes sense, team. I'm looking forward to your thoughts and your comments down below as we continue to master our craft 
and, and develop our virtue, develop what it is about us that we need to develop in order to be able to enjoy the woods around us, which of course bushcrafting, that's what that's all about, is not just surviving, but about thriving and having a good time off in the woods. But as well as what we need to get that gun be able to affect survival in some worst case scenarios or events, and even some more likely events as well. So let's continue this conversation down in the comments below, man. Consider sharing this out with a friend or battle buddy as well. If you enjoyed the content, of course, make sure you like it. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. That way you can stay up to date. And if you want to up that to the next level, then head on over to stochromatic.com and sign up there, not only to, for a, a weekly update for video content, but you can also take, go check out some swag and some other items. I appreciate all you guys, man. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.